managed to convince the jury that each shooting was justified. CBS 2's Dick Brennan spoke with some legal experts today. He's here in studio with more on that. Dick? Well, Christine and Maurice, this case strikes at the heart of so many legal questions. Most importantly, how far can you go to defend yourself? And it raised questions about gun rights versus vigilantism. The legal standards are very different around the country. I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse told the jury he was defending himself, and it was a high bar for the prosecution to overcome the defense claim. We have to remember that the burden of proof is on the government. It is on the prosecutor beyond a reasonable doubt that the prosecutor must show that Kyle Rittenhouse did not act in self-defense. That is an extraordinarily high burden. Perhaps crucial to the case, videotape of the incident, which provides a timeline. Rittenhouse arrived at the Kenosha protest with a semi-automatic rifle, saying his brother asked him to come to help protect people and businesses. He says first, he was ambushed by a protester, Joseph Rosenbaum, whom he shot dead. As you see him lunging at you, what do you do? I shoot him. And how many times did you shoot? I believe four. Rittenhouse then said he took off down the street being chased by protesters. He fell down and shot and killed another man, Anthony Uber, who he says attacked him. He grabs my gun and I can feel it pulling away from me and this, I can feel the strap starting to come off my, my body. And what do you do then? I fire one shot. Rittenhouse shot and wounded a third man who was standing over him with a gun in his hand. The jury apparently believed Rittenhouse was not the aggressor, despite his actions with the weapon. I don't think anyone, Wisconsin, New York, or Idaho, thinks going with an AR-15 is reasonable. That's not the question. The question is, is going with an AR-15 criminal? And is going with an AR-15 committing homicide? And legal experts say the jury's unanimous verdict indicates it fully embraced the defense's version of events. In this case, what we saw were the competing narratives of Kyle Rittenhouse on one hand being a victim and on one hand being a vigilante. And ultimately, what we know now is that the jury bought the narrative of Kyle Rittenhouse being a victim. But the legal road may not be over for Rittenhouse, who could face civil charges. Civilly, he has all sorts of problems because there's different standards to prove a civil case as opposed to a criminal case. And those different standards in a civil case, the proof is not beyond a reasonable doubt, and there is no need for unanimous verdict. Christina Maurice. All right, Dick.